Our next speaker is a graduate of Cornell with a degree in architecture. Uh, she returned home to Hong Kong and while there uh, developed a restaurant called Habitu. Uh, Habitu is a restaurant uh, serving amazing Italian food and equally amazing coffee to go along with it. She now manages a business group uh, whose portfolio includes Habitu, uh, the Coffee Academics, uh, Suzuki Cafe, Cafe Green Print, and these businesses span Hong Kong, Singapore, Shanghai, and very soon several other cities in Asia. Um, here to give a talk on the, uh, the history of specialty coffee in Asia, please welcome Jennifer Liu. Around 50 years ago. 
So you can see that it's, um, it's not a very established, well-designed uh, kind of place. And they only really roast um, a, a robust beans. Um, we have not been um, dealing with uh, rabbit plants or any top quality beans only until very recently, um, um, probably around um, 15 years ago, where Asia starts to look into specialty coffee and also look into uh, better uh, coffee beans apart from the uh, robust. So um, um, that's in Hong Kong. Um, the picture on top, um, I was just talking about how there were a lot of um, female practitioners. So you can see that um, coffee had primarily been a very male-dominated um, industry. Um, men, old people, and um, uh, people who make coffee this very traditional way in Malaysia, for example. And um, the picture below is um, coffee served in Singapore. So what they do is uh, robust the coffee with condensed milk um, and then a toast for, um, for breakfast. In Japan, um, things are a little bit more luxurious, even around 30, 40 years ago. This is a very old um, Western um, uh, inspired coffee house where you see um, the baristas will be wearing a, a very formal um, outfit um, making cyclone coffee. Um, and they will usually be brewing coffee um, that's from Blue Mountain or um, uh, a lighter roast in general for cycling coffee in Japan. So that's a, a little bit of a contrast to the uh, robust coffee that's found in other parts of Asia. Um, Asia also grows coffee. Um, we have Vietnam um, growers, especially among female growers in Vietnam and also um, in where um, these two Asian uh, countries also contribute to the um, coffee culture. So um, in the 1990s, um, we have um, the coffee beans and tea leaves, Starbucks, Ely, and the Bucks are coming into Asia. Um, so uh, I think from the past generation where uh, male-dominated coffee practitioners um, uh, slowly age, uh, I think um, in the second wave coffee, um, we have a lot of younger um, graduates and uh, female uh, students joining multinational companies to learn a lot more about what a good cup of coffee is about. Um, in this period, in the 90s, in Asia, we don't see a lot of um, independent, local, uh, branded coffee houses. Um, every cup of coffee that we drink would really be from um, a multinational or like a, an overseas brand. Um, starting in the 2010s, um, we start to see um, a stronger identity of Asia, even through the coffee community. Um, this is a picture in Singapore where um, it's a very old hardware shop on the facade. But inside, it's um, one of the first Singapore independent cafes. So you can see that um, the outside retains its very um, Singapore original looking facade, but inside um, things are happening, things are changing. Um, in Bangkok, um, same thing, um, you see a lot of these new independent cafes coming up. Um, every street of Bangkok or in Bali, you will now see um, independent cafes run by um, um, individuals. Um, in Tokyo, this is a very interesting cafe, which again, the facade um, shows like, it, it, I mean, it looks like a, a sand garden, um, but, but when you look deeper into it, um, it's actually another um, 
Japan Cafe that um, deals with the um, Japanese traditional culture and um, new making, uh, coffee making techniques. In Korea, um, things are happening very fast. Um, Korea is now surpassing Tokyo or Japan in many ways. Um, one of the very interesting jokes that we have is that in Korea, um, if you go for a plastic surgery, you usually would still pass through a cafe before you get to the clinic. So you can imagine how many cafes there are in Seoul or in every part of Korea. Um, it's a very budding um, healthy culture, very important one for Asia. Um, China is relatively new um, in the independent cafe scene. Um, it's catching up very, very fast. Um, but this picture, it, um, it's actually taken around three years ago. It's, um, it's this um, first independent uh, Shanghai um, cafe that's called Seesaw. Um, I don't have the latest picture, um, but this is like the first one, which is a tiny one. Um, the, the latest development that they have is already 100,000 square feet uh, outlet that's in Qingdao. So um, you can see how China is also catching up very fast in terms of scale um, and also in the demand. Um, we want to share a little bit about the numbers. Um, Hong Kong is experiencing a growth of 9%. Um, the trade value terms is now um, US 170 million and 4,500 tons in 2015. Singapore is um, a little less, 1%, um, and it's reaching 8,600 tons. Um, China is the really strong number contributor. Um, it's growing 6%. And it's um, US 1 billion um, volume terms and 63,000 pounds in two million. Um, what's next for Asia? I think customization and bespoke is a very important um, development. Um, this is an example of a um, pop up store in Hong Kong where. Um, Customers would come in and fill out an interactive form about their preferences. For example, um, their taste profiles um, and what they like in their daily lives, and to um, have their own bespoke uh, custom brand coffee beans as a gift or for themselves. Um, another implementation would be um, food innovation. Um, coffee is important, but for Asia, food is also very um, very critical part. So um, on menus, you will see um, even for noodles and pastas, we will have a, a range of, uh, say, Vietnamese Thai noodles, uh, Vietnamese and Thai noodles, as well as um, Italian pastas, um, and also healthy options. Um, in coffee houses, um, we also uh, start to look into global cuisines. Um, these islands are almost um, as as good as um, a fine dining restaurant. Um, you have um, steaks and um, grilled dishes and all that. So this is still a very Asian thing. Um, coffee is important, but coffee is probably about, um, in, in a typical uh, coffee house in Asia, I think food would still be about 50% uh, uh, in terms of contribution to the sales. Um, mm -hmm. Although coffee obviously is rising up in percentage. Um, product innovation is important. Um, Chinese and the Asians have very strong um, um, this uh, sweet palate. Um, cold brew, for example, is just starting um, in, in Asia, but sweetened drinks are still the biggest sellers. Um, not to confuse um, the coffee beans with too many synthetic syrups or flavorings, um, we have been playing with different types of sugar. Um, for example, the Nuka honey from New Zealand, um, Okinawa sugar from Japan, 
um, coconut, um, sugar flour from um, Indonesia, and also from various types of sugars from different parts of the world. So this is our answer to product innovation without being um, overly um, too far from the um, natural flavors that, that uh, compromises with the uh, coffee. Um, product innovation um, is also very important. As you can see, um, the beans from different parts of the world, all the way to colorful, Instagrammable um, drinks are very good trends in Asia, um, especially in Taiwan and in Japan, where um, Primarily, the, well, uh, the camera starts before anything else. So, um, picture, um, picture, pic picture, um, good-looking drinks are very, very important. Um, another trend that we see in Asia is that um, coffee was a um, a drink that energizes. So um, by adding Asian ingredients such as um, goji berry, uh, ginseng, and licorice, um, that's a new trend that goes into uh, coffee as well. Um, this is an example where um, we're using Bruce Lee as, a, um, as an iconic figure to show how you know, after you drink this certain product, uh, a tonic uh, of some sort of coffee, that you will be as or um, looking at things. <laughs> um, technology is also um, important now in Asia. Um, uh, a loyalty program, um, prepay program, um, is very similar to SpeedCap. Um, it's also um, something that Asia is um, very interested in, especially in Um, quality collaborations. Um, we work is nothing new to Americans, but they've just entered the Asian market. Um, so for our brand, we are partnering with them um, at the pantry service, and we are also supporting um, entrepreneurs and startups and um, um, VC uh, private clubs to um, provide coffee beverages to um, the community. Um, millennium lifestyle is um, a big thing as well in Asia. Uh, this is um, um, a cycling tour um, that we did in Hong Kong with um, all these young people cycling around the old scenic spots in Hong Kong while um, having a coffee drink along the way. And um, this kind of um, uh, healthy um, exercise trend is becoming very big in Asia as well. So we'll move into the um, coffee academics and a little bit about who we are. Um, starting in 2012, um, we are the first um, roastery cafe in Hong Kong. So um, 2012 to America is not, uh, it's not very early, but for Asia, um, we are already the first um, specialty coffee um, in the region. Um, we call ourselves a chain of independence because every single shop um, is designed in-house um, by our own in-house team, and each shop has a different um, appeal and a different design. Um, reason for that is because um, consumers Today, they do not want any cookie cutting um, looking solutions. Um, we try to make good use of our um, design ability to provide different designs and different experience to our customers. So all of these are um, designed in-house by our own team. And you can see that the shop, apart from the menu and the uniform, um, the shop designs are all different. Um, Growing uh, to Singapore and Shanghai, um, in both cities, um, we've been um, receiving 
very good um, response, and it gave us a lot of confidence about how specialty coffee is um, still a very much growing um, market in the region. Um, in Tokyo, uh, we participated in the Tokyo Design Week. Uh, we've also um, exclusively worked with a, um, a farm in Panama, Peruvi, to be providing um, unique coffee beans to um, um, blend. Um, we now have a team of around 400 baristas in Hong Kong, um, aging from uh, 22 to around 35. So um, we have a very a young team of members. Um, there's still a lot to go from roasting to chopping to um, all aspects of specialty coffee. Um, but we're very happy to be um, one of the most important education center for Asia. Um, this is a summary of the syllabus that we do in Asia and um, the classes that we do both professionally and also for as a lifestyle. Um, the company is now um, rather stable and mature, and the team um, are also looking into our CSR. So um, we have a little bit of a uh, fashion show for you today. Um, my our marketing manager Karen will be showing a piece where um, our upside plane team. Um, created this jacket and a clutch um, made by Coffee Sacks. <laughs> um, since it's New York Fashion Week, so. <laughs> <laughs>
Is it similar to the U.S. where a lot of these shops will uh, go to uh, a wholesale roaster and buy the coffee? Uh, so are there just a few pillar wholesale roasters or are most of the shops roasting for themselves? Um, I don't see a lot of roast, roasters in Asia yet um, because I think the traditional roasters are still um, located in poorer regions of for example, in Hong Kong, most of the roasting is done in the upper north side of China. And um, in Thailand, um, most of the roasting is done in the south. Um, so for them to be able to understand where roasting is actually something that um, it's worth the relocation to the city, and to be able to understand where um, roasting high quality beans is actually uh, very good for profits. Um, it, will, it, will, it will take some time. But I guess, again, Asia always turns to um, US and Europe to see what's happening so that they can catch up very fast. So if, for example, Stumptown is doing a great job, um, Blue Bottle is doing a great job, then you definitely see that trend um, influencing Asia as well. Great. We have a question over here, and this will be our last one. Thank you. Hi, I'm Florian. Actually, I'm from uh, Bangkok, Thailand. I would like to give like, a little bit add on what you said for the roasters. So, uh, in Thailand, actually, we're one of the only uh, countries where we have a state sponsored coffee program. It's from our king, it's like the royal project. Uh, it's up in the north, and uh, yeah, that would be like a main roaster for us and for the region as well. So, everything there is like concentrated on all the roasters, like you say, the independent coffee shops in Bangkok which are everywhere at the moment. Yeah. We get it back locally, and we're really strong on uh, like the Royal Project thing. So it's called Boy Tunes, anybody's interested, mm -hmm. and it's worth a look. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, very admirable Thai royalty to always be doing a lot of good work for his people. Um, the queen and sisters are always doing a great job. So um, similar to Seoul, the government is doing a lot for the cafe business. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen,